It was a scary situation that played out in February. Calls coming into 911 reporting active shooters at these New Mexico schools all at the same time. State high schools receiving threats. Parents were scared. I mean, as a mom, the first thing that goes to your mind is the worst case scenario, and how are you going to get to your child fast enough? Police and SWAT teams rushing to the scenes. They received a call around 12:30 about a shooting here at the school. Now, and at the end of the day, it was all a hoax. It's a phenomenon called swatting. You say that there's some heinous crime being committed, shots are being fired, somebody's armed, and then the, the individuals who make the call uh, in a lot of cases would watch the response. This is what was heard that day in February by dispatchers in Bernalillo, Three students have been shot in the cafeteria. Rio Rancho, and one student who had a gun he shot the other student in the cafeteria, and Santa Fe. He shot the three students in the cafeteria and he's gone. We don't know where did he went. The details obviously uh, were very similar. Law enforcement expert Paul Zeich listened to the calls. They, they've got enough detail that makes you really uh, think, hey, they're, they're really there, they're in the scene. Uh, they're at the scene. But New Mexico is not alone. Working with our sister stations throughout the country, Target 7 found similar calls in Georgia. All classrooms get locked after they have been shot. Ohio. They came to our classroom next to our classroom. He opened fire on the students. And Iowa. He shot the four students right now. I saw it four students are bleeding. I see blood on the shoe in the bathroom. Those three calls, along with other calls through uh, in other parts of the country, um, it definitely sounds like the same individual. And this is what it's like for police rushing to one of these calls. We received only one call from this location at this time stating there is one shooter in the school. This is video from Lawrence, Kansas. You can see students rushing out of the school and police rushing to the scene. The reality is law enforcement does not have the luxury of not responding um, with uh, the same tenacity is they would if uh, you know they know 100% certain that this is happening. Target 7 has been able to find instances of at least 100 high schools nationwide that have received fake reports of bomb or shooting threats since last June. The FBI does not track swatting because it's not a categorized crime. When it comes to the investigation of these events uh, after the after the fact, it's going to be different from municipality to municipality depending on the size size of agency. Here in New Mexico, Target 7 cannot find any record showing anyone has been charged. We checked in with all of the agencies and the FBI, and so far, they've yet to identify a suspect. If they have detectives that um, can maybe do some voice analysis, uh, start putting together, connecting the dots from other municipalities that this has happened, and hopefully we're, we're communicating with each other. Even if New Mexico law enforcement were able to figure out who made these calls, they wouldn't serve much time in prison. Well, the most you could get would be a misdemeanor conviction, and that's why state law is <clears throat> behind the curve on uh, what's happening these days. That means the most someone could spend behind bars is one year and a $1,000 fine for a swatting call. KOAT legal expert John Day says, however, making a bomb threat to a school is a felony. There's no specific law addressing what would be referred to as a swatting call. Now, there are uh, criminal penalties for making bomb threats. There are criminal penalties for making false police reports. But I think the legislature probably has to address this. When's the last time you've heard of a bomb threat to a school? Uh, what you're hearing today is shooting threats. Senator Craig Brandt, a Republican from Rio Rancho, tried to do just that in the past legislative session, but his bill failed. It literally ought to be treated as a terrorist attack because that's all you've done is cause terror in the lives and the hearts of every one of those people that were involved, and honestly, including myself. For Target 7, I'm John Cardinelli.